thank you. Thank you that you are our defense, you are our righteousness. Thank you that you are our hope and stay. We can trust in you. Thank you for your sweet presence here. Thank you that we can come into your presence and we can worship. Lord, there's many today who carry heavy burdens. Pray that they will learn that you say, Come unto me, all you heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you for what you're, what you're doing. Thank you for what you'll do now as we study your word. May you be glorified and honored, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much. I want to thank... Israel and Debbie and the worship team, and the worship team includes all those playing instruments. Uh, Debbie and Sue are helping with the praise team, the choir, those up in the sound and the media booth, and we appreciate our worship team and all those who are included in that, and we're so thankful uh, to be led into the presence of the Lord in such a wonderful, sweet time of worship. And we're so thankful that you're here with us. And uh, there's lots of folks who, who watch online now, and so we just want to say to all those folks that we appreciate you listening and watching. And if you don't have a church home, you come and worship with us here. And uh, we will uh, be glad to help you with spiritual, spiritual needs. If you let us know, just call a church office. We're glad that the Word of God is going forth. And you're sharing. Uh, you're sharing with folks about the new website and opportunities there. So we are thankful for that. We'll turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Our theme this year is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And Acts 3, 19 says this. It says, Therefore repent and be converted or turn back that your sins may be blotted out or your sins may be wiped out so that seasons or times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That's been our theme, those three words. Return. Repent, return, and refresh. Today our focus is on this word refresh. We think about before we can have seasons of refreshing, before the presence of the Lord brings refreshing into our life, we have to do the first two. The first one was to repent, uh, to be broken for our sins, to, be, to come to a place of confession, uh, come to a place that we acknowledge that we have sin in our life. We turn away from sin. To repent means to turn from sin, to turn. To, you're going this direction, you're disobeying God, and you're turning away from that sin. Second of all is to return. Return to our first love. We talked about this last week. Return to Jesus. Return to our, our time with Him and, and that He's a priority in our life. And so to repent means to turn away from sin, and to return means to turn back to Jesus and, and focus back on our first love and make Him a... Priority. So now that leads to the third thing. And without repentance and without returning, there can't be refreshing. We want to read our focus passage here. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. There's a lawyer who came and asked Jesus a question in 25, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Of course, Jesus usually asks a question back. He says, what is your reading of it? What's written in the law? And so this lawyer says in verse 27... He answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. In just a few moments, that's going to be our, our sermon outline there, those four things that we need to be refreshed in. But before we get there, let's talk a little bit about the need of refreshing. In the passage in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it says, Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. It comes from being in His presence. It comes from daily spending time in God's Word, from reading God's Word, from meditating on God's Word, from memorizing God's Word, from spending time in God's Word. That's where refreshing comes from. It comes from His presence. It comes from His presence in prayer daily, 
seeking out the face of God daily, desiring to talk to Him. It comes from the presence of the Lord comes when we come into worship. We've been in the presence of the Lord today. Can you say amen? He, he's here because we, we are worshiping Him and we're acknowledging the name of Jesus. And so we're, we're honoring and glorifying and worshiping Him when we gather in corporate worship. That's what we're doing here today. But then daily you should be having your personal worship. One of the things, just a little change I did, and I, tell, I told the Daniel plan this, is I used to listen to sports talk radio, I used to listen to political talk radio, and all these talking heads, you know, all the time. And, and I began listening, for me, it's 88.3, this, this Christian praise and worship music. And so I made a choice a couple of months ago that my radio was just going to stay on 88.3. It's just going to stay there. And so when I get in the car to go to the hospital, I get in the car to go visit, I get in the car to go wherever I'm going, there's a time of worship for me. Because I'm just worshiping as they're singing those songs. And it's just a personal worship. And I'm in the presence of the Lord. And if you drive on Stone Drive, you need to be in the presence of the Lord. I mean, that's just the way it is. You, you need Him there to calm you. To give you peace and to worship. And so the presence of the Lord is where refreshing comes from. Turn over in Psalm 51 with me. We're going to come back to Luke in just a minute. But Psalm 51, David speaks about this journey that we're talking about. He talks about this three-part journey to repent, to return, and to refresh. Psalm 51, you're familiar. David, after he's been confronted about Bathsheba, and his adultery, and his murder, and here's David's response, Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. There's the understanding about repentance. We're going to see more. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. He takes ownership. It's my iniquity. It's not my husband's fault. It's not my wife's fault. It's not my dad's fault. It's not my mom's fault. It's not my kid's fault. It's not my boss's fault. No, it's my, I take ownership myself. It's my fault. It's my sin. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Their repentance, I acknowledge it. And my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived of me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Repentance. If there's not been a place of repentance, if you're here and you're lost today and you're not a follower of Jesus, this is the first step to salvation is to repent, to acknowledge, God, it's my sin. I've sinned against you. I've disobeyed you. I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. I'm separated from you, and I repent. I turn. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I want Him to save me, forgive me. Verse 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. There's the picture of repenting and returning. And now listen to verse 10. Here's the picture of refreshing. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Where did we say refreshing came from? What did the Acts say? The presence of the Lord. It's in His presence that we have refreshing. Here, Dave says, don't, David says, don't, don't cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do you want to know where refreshing comes from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings refreshing into our lives. You saw the video of the, of the broken glass and the glass empty. What refreshes us? What mends us? What, what stirs in us and brings gladness and joy again? It's the Holy Spirit. Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Once we've repented, once we've returned, then there's refreshing, and then once refreshing happens, then we can teach and reach sinners, and they'll be converted. Then we can praise the Lord, but these things need to happen. There needs to be a repentance, and there needs to be a returning, and there needs to be a refreshing. There is such a need for a refreshing among God's people, among God's churches, 
among the followers of Christ. There needs to be such a refreshing. If you look at the landscape among churches, most churches today, there is a lack of commitment. There is a lack of compassion. There is a a lack of gratitude. There is a, a lack of a burden for those who are lost and hurting. Among many followers of Christ today, there is a great need for a refreshing to happen a renewed strength, a renewed joy, a a hunger and energy and excitement, a a passion for Jesus, a a hunger for His presence. When Jen and I used to do a garden with uh, Sharon and and Vance, what good times we had. And uh, I remember be out there with Vance and we'd put those mater plants in the ground. You first put them out. They look, you know, like they weren't going to do anything. They were withered and they just kind of flop over and, you know, are they going to make it? But then Vance and Sharon knew what they were doing. You put that fertilized before you put them in the ground. And then when the water hit them and, and you got the weeds away from them, those tomato plants would be refreshed and the, the rain would come and it would refresh them. And where they were withered and dried, now they're alive and they're hungry for the rain and the sun. And that's what I'm talking about when we talk about refreshing. I'm talking about many of us become dry and withered, and we need a refreshing from the Lord. Go back to Luke chapter 10. Four areas that we need refreshing. And this lawyer gives us a great outline here. Four areas that we need to be refreshed. Our hearts, our soul, our strength and our mind. I learned a lot about this term refresh. It's been a great couple of weeks for me as I was studying this passage. I just enjoyed this whole whole subject, this whole focus about the refreshing. A picture of a waterfall here. The refreshing. There's many in this sanctuary today and many watching on YouTube and the website who, who need a refreshing. You've become dry. You've become withered. Uh, you, you, you've, you've kind of left that first love and, and there's such a need for refreshing. And so let's break down these four areas, four areas that we need to be refreshed. First of all, we need to have a refreshing of our hearts. Now, I know all of you love broccoli, right? Uh, the Daniel plan has been a great class. Me and Jen have enjoyed being coaches with the Daniel plan. And, and Jen and I try to eat a lot of broccoli, Okay. Broccoli. There, there's a process that I learned in cooking that's, that's called refreshing. What you do is you take broccoli or some type of vegetable that you've been cooking, and when it comes to a bull, if you take that broccoli and you take it out of the boiling pot and you put it under some cold water, that's called a refreshing process. What it does to that broccoli is when it, you take it from that hot pot into that cold water, this process, what happens to it? First of all, it stops the cooking and the boiling immediately. It's not going to cook out the nutritions anymore. It's, it's going to stop the cooking. Second of all, it's going to cause the broccoli to taste sweeter. Now, I don't know about that, but that's what it says. It's going to make it keep its color, if that matters to you. It's going to make it be crisper. It's going to make it uh, hold its texture more. It's going to make it to be fresh. And so this cold water, what it does then is it takes that broccoli and it refreshes it. Have you ever got into a hot tub? You sit in the hot tub till you're just sweating, you know? feels so good. You're sitting there in a hot tub and you're sweating. And then you get out of the hot tub and you run over and you jump in that cold pool. You ever done that? It's refreshing. It's, it's refreshing. That's the same thing you do with your broccoli, okay? You're refreshing it. You put it from the hot pot into that cold water, and it, and it refreshes it. Well, let's apply that to our, to our lives. The hot water of life brings us to a bull. Can you say amen? I mean, it's so easy for our hearts to get withered, to get worn, to get hard, to get cold. It's so easy, as the video reminded us, 
that life just drains us, discourages us, disappoints us, deflates us, distracts us, defeats us, and there we are, bullying and all the things of this world, and there we are, and we, we get just, just, just overcome with this, and our hearts become so, so needful. The refreshing of the Lord is what's needed for our hearts. This refreshing process applied to my life was this. When I get a cold heart, when I get a lack of commitment, a lack of compassion, when I lose my hunger for God, I need a refreshing. I need God to take my heart. It's been bullying in the things of this world. Struggles and troubles and worries. And I need Him to take my heart and to hold it under the cold water of the Word of God. Hold it under the cold water of the freshness of the Holy Spirit. And then when the Word of God begins to, to bring into my heart, when the Holy Spirit begins to fresh my heart, then some things happen. The bullying stops immediately and I have a peace from God. All those things I've been worried about, all those burdens I've been carrying, all those things have been troubling me and my heart's broken and my heart's worried and burdened. And when I cry out to God and I say, I need a refreshing. And God's Word and God's Holy Spirit just pours onto my heart. The bullying stops. And there's a peace. The freshness comes. There's a freshness that comes into my heart. There, there's a sweet spirit now in my heart. Before I was sour, now I'm sweet because of the cold water of the Word of God. Refreshing. I'm fresher and I'm crisper. And, and, and my heart now begins to soften. Begins to have compassion. Begins to be more committed. There's a change in my life. I'm energized. The refreshing of our heart. I don't know about you, but there's many times when I need a freshness. I need a revival. I need a refreshing in my heart. The second thing we learn about is the refreshing of our soul. I appreciate Josh. Josh found these pics for me, all these pictures for me. Uh, I appreciate the war, hard work he's doing. I appreciate him up in the booth. The Webster Dictionary defines refresh as this. To give someone more of a drink. Refreshing of our soul. Honey, am I saying that right? Jen has, she's going to write a book one day about uh, Johnisms. There's certain words, I, just, I see them in my brain, but they just don't come out of my lips the way they're supposed to come out. Is anybody else like that? I mean, it just don't come out. And Jen's been having to lift me, listen to me preach for for almost 25 years, and so she's got these Johnanisms, and soul is one of those things I don't say right sometimes. She says, it sounds like you're talking about the bottom of your shoe, you know, and so soul, how's that, is that good, honey? Is that rolling off the tongue good? Soul, to refresh our soul. When you go to lunch, if you go out to eat today, if you're not going to Pals, and you're going somewhere else, okay, and they sit down, and they, you're drinking water, or tea, or Coke, or whatever, coffee, your waitress or waiter is going to come and they're going to refresh your drink. Do you need more Dr. Pepper? Do you need more water? Do you need more coffee? They'll come and they'll, they'll pour more into your cup because your cup is, is getting low. Refreshing of our soul. Application for us. The Word of God is what refreshes our soul. I don't know about you. But life has a way about draining us. Can you say amen? There are certain people, and I don't take it personal, but there are certain people that have a way about draining you. You know it? Just emptying you out. I mean, the world and the things of this world and people and situations and your jobs and tests at school and subjects at school and all the things going on in your life has a way about just draining you and, and emptying you. I mean, there are certain people who can just suck the life out of you. I mean, and there you are, and you got this empty soul, and you're drained, and you're tired, and you're, you're withered, and you're dry, and you're, you're wore out, and, and there we are in need of a... Refreshing. And it's the Holy Spirit and it's the Word of God that can refresh and refill 
our souls. There's some of you here today who have gotten burnt out on church. You've gotten burnt out on doing church stuff. And you're empty and you're drained. You've lost the joy. Let me tell you one of the reasons why you lost your joy is because you've got your focus off of Jesus and you've got your focus on to people. And it's a job. It's not a job. It's a joy. We're doing what we do for Jesus. doesn't matter whether anybody pats us on the back. doesn't matter if anybody ever notices. We do it for Jesus. And so there, there we are. We've got this empty soul. And we need to be nourished. We need a refreshing. And so there comes the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And the Word of God begins to, to refill us. And, and we're filled again with the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And, and there's a refreshing. We're ready to serve. We're ready, we're ready to do things for the Lord. We're ready to live for Him. There's a re refreshing in our lives. Oh, how we need joy and excitement to be refilled in our souls. Some of you today... There's so much struggles and troubles in your life. Your soul feels so, so defeated, so darkened. And Jesus is longing to, to refresh your soul. Just like filling up a lemonade glass. He wants to fill you with the Word of God and the Spirit of God and to refresh well, the third thing in our passage here in Luke chapter 10 is we need a refreshing of our strength. Gatorade, back in the 60s, was invented because Florida Gators couldn't beat the Tennessee Vols. And so that's why they <laughs> invented the Gatorade, to give them aid to be able to beat the Vols. That's not, it was invented by the University of Florida people, but it wasn't that purpose. But... Uh, Gatorade, if you look on the bottle, it says thirst quencher. You, you read advertisements. It's to help with recovery. It's to help to replenish all that, that, that you sweat out of your bodies. In the summertime, we'll be out working in the yard, and my lovely bride will bring me a Gatorade. Since the Daniel plan, it'll be a Powerade Zero. That's what she'll bring me. The, and there it'll be. And there you are, you're sweating, you're hot, and, and you just sweat it all, this stuff out of your body, and, and you get that Gatorade or Powerade, and you drink it, and it's a refreshing. Uh, you, say you've been playing ball, or you've been marching in the band, or whatever it is that you've been doing, and, and, and you get hot and sweaty, and you get a Gatorade or a Powerade or, or something that refreshes. And, and so here's the need that we have. We need a refreshing of our strength. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, you don't have to turn. 1 Corinthians 16, 18, Paul says this, For they refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge such men. Several times in the scriptures, Paul will say, You've been refreshing to me. You have, re you have refreshed my spirit. You have refreshed my soul. There's a refreshing that comes from other people. God uses other people to refresh us. Just like Gatorade or Powerade will refresh us, God uses other people. When other people come along and they put their arm around you and they say, man, I really appreciate what you're doing. Man, you made a difference in my life. Thank you for teaching me in Sunday school. Thank you for, for coming and visiting me. Thank you for, for teaching my, my child in preschool. Thank you for watching the babies in the nursery. Thank you for when you sing in a choir. It's just a blessing to me. Thank you. They come alongside and they, they encourage us and they strengthen us and it's refreshing. The woman I talk about all the time, my bride Jen, she's a refresher. She's a re refreshment to me. She's my encouragement. She, she is the one that stands with me faithfully and, and encourages me in my walk with Christ and, and what I'm called to do. And she's a refreshment to me. People here in this church, you're a refreshment to my family. You encourage us. I have friends who encourage me. And, and Dustin coming on board on staff has been a refreshment. Refreshed my spirit and my soul and given me new energy and new enthusiasm and, and just what, how he's come along and, and just been refreshing. We are to be a refreshment to one another. Can I just encourage you? 
Ask God to help you to refresh others. To be an encourager. I jotted in my notes, and I'm probably going to tweet this after the service. Ask God to help you be a Gatorade instead of prune juice, okay? <laughs> we got plenty of bottles of prune juice out there that name the name of Jesus, and they're sour, and they're negative, and when I see them, I try to avoid them, and I try to hide, or like my son does, act like you're talking on the phone, you know. You know, don't be prune juice. We got enough Christians who look like prune juice who just bring everybody down. Be Gatorade. Be Powerade. Be it's going to replenish and encourage and lift up others and encourage others. And even when you have to say a tough word to a friend, speak the truth in love. Be Gatorade. Please don't be prune juice. We need a refreshing of our strength. The fourth thing in the passage, he says, love the Lord with all your mind. Most of your devices, if you have an iPhone, you, you swipe down. On your computer, there's a refresh button. There's a, a reboot button in your email. When you go into email, it's been sitting there for a while, you push that little button, refresh button, and what happens? It refreshes your email. On your phone, you swipe down. It brings in updated data onto your advice. So there you swipe, it's updated. On your email, you push that update button, and there it turns, and you're, you're updated. There's new data that you needed to get that's been refreshed. Let's apply this to our lives. We have so much data coming into our minds. TV, radio, media, all the social media, the opinions of people. If you go to public schools, you've got worldview being taught to you from every way coming. And, and so all of this influence, we're getting all of this data into our mind all the time. Data, data, data. I'm saying today there needs to be a refreshing of our minds. I'm saying that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to hit the refresh button in our minds. And there needs to be a loading of some new data. We hear all the lies of Satan. We hear all the lies of the worldview and what we need to do. And young people, especially you guys, and even college students, and even us adults, and single adults, and senior adults, we need to allow the refresh button to be punched into our minds, and we get new data, and that new data is a biblical worldview. Can you say amen? amen. That we see things from a biblical view. That we quit listening to all the, the lies of Satan. That we quit listening to all the worldview of what things should be. And there is a rebooting of our minds. And we hear what God says to us. And God says to us, I love you. And God says to us, I want to forgive you. And God says to us, I accept you through my son Jesus Christ. Many of you here today have this stronghold. Statistics on the Baptist Faith and Message this, this month about how many teenage boys are involved in pornography. How many teenage girls are involved in pornography. How many adults are involved in pornography. And so there needs to be a, a rebooting, a refresh button hit in our minds and that stronghold of pornography, if that's the, what's in your, what's your stronghold, whatever it is. And there needs to be a refresh button, a button that says, okay, let's wipe this away. And let's get new data. New data says, let's keep our minds pure. Let's, let's wait. Sex is for marriage and marriage only. And any form of anything outside is sin. And so there's a refresh button that happens. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. A refresh button has been hit, it says. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become New. We need a refreshing in our minds. Can you say amen to that? A refreshing. You've been bombarded with all of this negative thinking and all this world thinking. Let us say today, God, we need a refreshing. 
Refreshing of our hearts, of our soul, of our strength, and of our mind. We need a refreshing. We need to be refreshed because then, if you go to Luke chapter 10, what's the rest of the verse says? Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Once we've repented, once we've returned, and we're refreshed, and our hearts and our soul and our strength and our mind is refreshed, then we will be able to love our neighbor as we should. We'll be able to take the gospel and we'll be a witness because they see the difference that's happened in our life. Would you join me with praying today, Lord, I need a refreshing. Stand with me for prayer. Your heads are bowed. In just a moment, we're going to have what we call an invitation. It's an opportunity for you to respond. You can respond right there in your pew. You can respond as you're listening right there where you're at. But we invite you to come forward if you have prayer needs. We invite you to come forward if you're here and you're lost. We invite you to come forward if you're here and you just need someone to pray with you. If you want to just come and pray, you're welcome. You can just come here and you can pray, visitor, member alike. If you're here and you're lost, the first step for you is to repent. Confess your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do during this invitation. Help us to be sensitive to what you're wanting to teach us. Lord, I need refreshing. Lord, there's some here today who their hearts have grown cold and, and dry. And they need a refreshing. Through the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit, a refreshing. Oh, how we need to be filled. Some here today, their glasses have been broken. Their life's falling apart. And oh, they need to come for refreshing from you. Those who are lost, we pray you would draw them to you and they'd be saved. Thank you for what you're going to do. We'll give you the glory and all the praise. We pray this in Jesus' name. Just keep your heads.